T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. All engines up and burning. 2, 1, 0, and lift off. Coach on Fire Radio. Hi, everyone. Welcome again to another edition of the Greatness Movement podcast. I'm your host, Kenny Weiss. I'm a life coach, speaker, author, and founder of the Greatness Movement based here in Phoenix, where we guide you to become the greatest version of yourself. And as always, hey, Julie, hey, everybody for tuning in. Um, please share the show. If you're on Facebook right now, please, if, if you have some friends, who struggle with obsessing, maybe they're married or even single, and uh, they can't let go of a certain problem. Maybe it's, you know, a lot of times this happens when we break up in a relationship, we just start obsessing over and over and over. We wanna find a solution and we can't stop thinking about it. Well, we're gonna give you some, one, we're gonna tell you where that comes from, and two, how to overcome it. So. If that's you that you're struggling, you, you personally are struggling with it, we all have at some point. I know I sure have. Um, or if someone close to you is struggling with that, and this could be a, it, this holds true for things at work. Say you have a boss that's driving you insane. Um, but any sort of person or situation that you are obsessing about tonight will really help you. So please invite your friends on Facebook um, to tune in and catch tonight's show. If you miss it, as always, you can catch all of my shows on iTunes, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, just look for the Greatness Movement podcast. If you're like me and a lot of people, you like watching videos, you can always subscribe to my YouTube channel. Just search for Kenny Weiss and all my podcasts are stored there. I generally download them after the show so they're there right away. Um, a lot of people like much rather watch a YouTube video than listen in the car or something like that. So whatever works for you, but join, subscribe to my YouTube channel because I'm always posting other things there. There's a bunch of free videos on different topics. And so make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you see a video you like there, please share it with friends so we can get this message out. You know, we're just trying to help as many people as we can. Now, before I get started on why we obsess, and why it's so difficult to deal with and get over. Uh, I wanna uh, talk about something that I'm really excited about. Many of you listeners are part of the greatness movement groups that I do uh, every month at my office. Well, this week we are kicking off the virtual groups. In other words, the online groups. I've had a ton of people reach out to me and go, well, I just, with kids or work or schedule, I can't make it you know, on those nights, or a lot of people live in other states, or, you know, I have a one guy who got in touch with me over a year ago from Australia, and we still chat through Facebook Messenger a lot, and he's been dying for this. When are you going to do online groups? Well, they start this week. Um, all of the promotional material and stuff is coming out. Now, th this is a great this is, if you're looking for growth in your life, if you're looking for success, if you're looking for greatness, the program I've developed will definitely bring that to you. It's, uh, we just go places that uh, other groups don't go. And so most of the people that are in the greatness movement, they've been to counselors, they've been to Landmark, they've been to all the great speakers out there and all their forums, and, and they're like, I, something's missing. And when, you know, they start, work in the process that um, that I talk about in my book and then teach in the curriculum for the greatness movement, they're like, yep, this was the missing piece. This is what I was looking for. So it's a really, it's a great setup. It's only $49 a month. I'm sorry, everybody can afford $49 a month. So it's not a price issue. And you get a video every month. Basically, this is what's fascinating too, is I've done something completely different than most of the online groups out there. Most of the online type forums, one, they try and sell you a 
two to six week course. Your life's going to change in six weeks. Doesn't work. It's, it's not how our brain and body works. That's why I designed it this way. It's 12 months long and you get a video every month. We go through the curriculum one month at a time. You get a workbook that'll be, you get a PDF that'll be emailed to you along with the video that you can watch whenever you want. And here's what's fascinating that's different. One of the groups has volunteered for me to videotape the group. So you're actually watching a live group versus me standing in front of a whiteboard or doing some sort of fancy presentation and it's just a talking head. The intimacy, the vulnerability, and then the real life experience of other people working through this process and you get to hear their stories and their struggles. Because let's face it, whenever we read a book, especially if it has to do with personal growth, what helps us get the material? It's everybody else's personal story. It's the stories they tell. They go, oh my God, that's me. I do that exactly the same way. And it's that identification that people get that allows them to absorb the material. And that's why I did it this way. It's just so much more powerful than some talking head, you know, telling you what to do. And so that's one major difference um, with the greatness movement uh, online groups, uh, the, the ability to grow that way. You'll also be part of the greatness uh, movement community. We're constantly talking in there and people, you know, a lady who just started reached out today and, and you know, struggling with some stuff. And these members that have been in the process for nine, 10 months, just jump in and let's go for coffee. Let's, you know, everyone's helping each other out. And we all look, we all do our best to do things on our own, but we all need each other. We need people to help us. And that's another great thing about this community is, you have people that have, you know, are at the tail end of this process and now they're turning into leaders and teachers and you want to talk about being able to change your life. That's the next step of growth is when you learn something and then you start teaching it to other people. That's when your own personal process goes through the roof is when you take on that mantle to people earlier in the process. So um, it's a wonderful opportunity. So for those of you who are watching tonight and uh, been, you know, wondering how can I get a piece of this? Well, that this is your opportunity. Send me an email to Kenny at the greatness movement.com. That's Kenny at the greatness movement.com. Send me an email and say, yeah, I want to join one of those online groups and I can send you the information and the link to get you all set up. The other great thing, too, is part of that, starting the online groups, uh, many of you have talked about getting my book but haven't done it yet. Well, we're offering it for free right now. So if you wanted a copy of the book, there's um, advertisements on my Facebook page. You can click on that. Or, again, send me an email to Kenny at thegreatnessmovement.com. I'll be happy to get you the stuff to fill that out so uh, you can get a free copy of my book because that's essential um, as far as working through the greatness movement groups and everything as well. They work hand in hand with each other. So I wanted to start with that. That's wonderful news. So if you know somebody that's struggling in your life, I don't care if they're already working with somebody, but they're not seeing results and they want to turn their life around, the greatness movement uh, groups are for them. So please share this video, share the information with them, let them know, hey, send Kenny an email at Kenny at the greatness movement.com. This is your answer. This is how you're going to turn your life around and start walking in your own greatness. Okay. All right. So <laughs> there's that. Obviously, we'll be talking a lot about that, um, the groups going forward, because that's a great way for me to take this message and spread it to give people tools because everybody's just hurting, not because anybody's bad. I say this all the time. None of us are bad. We're just lacking the information. And that's why I do what I do. I want to give people the information and that's why I do this show. So tonight I want to tackle why we obsess on people. Let's face it. Every single one of us, you ever been through a breakup? Think back to high school and all day long you lay in bed and you write poems and listen to love songs and can't stop thinking about them and trying to figure it out. Even now, 
you're 30, 40, 50, 60 years old. I see it all over Facebook all the time or even, you know, Instagram, people throwing X's under the bus, whether it's friends, whether it's marriages or partners or, you know, their company, whatever. We all obsess. And there's a very simple reason for that. Um, it's not too complicated. The reason we all obsess over romantic object or re romantic rejection or or even if it's a problem at work with our boss is when we feel and listen and I'm saying this for, for a reason when we feel that rejection the reason we feel it is it's stimulating parts of our brain that are associated with motivation reward and here's the kicker addiction and cravings all right the reason you're obsessing over somebody is you are in white hot addiction i know that's uncomfortable for many people to hear but if you wear blue socks if that's your favorite color socks or black's your favorite color whatever that's an addiction too if you like mexican food you're an addict literally anything you do repeatedly is an addiction if you watch a certain TV show, if you watch this podcast every week, you're probably addicted. You definitely are. If it's every week, that's how we do everything in our life. Okay? There's so, there's such a societal hang up about the word addiction. Oh my god, I'm, you know, living in the street corner. I'm less than other people. Well, every single choice you make in your life is an addiction. That's how the brain and body work. It creates chemicals. It creates a chemical loop between the cells of your body and your brain, and they make requests, repeated requests, for that chemical loop to continue. And so what, what you're in the throes of is a massive chemical addiction. Now, here's where it gets a little deeper is, okay, I guess I can kind of accept that I'm addicted. I know a lot of people too, they're like, ah, don't tell me I'm addicted. I don't want to admit that. Well, that's part of why you're addicted. <laughs> that's called denial. <laughs> that's what's getting you stuck in obsession. That's one of the pieces. So there, there are several elements that this addiction creates in us. And really, I've identified kind of five things um, that make us all predisposed to addiction. And I'm going to rattle them off, and then I'm kind of going to go through them, and then I'm going to give you a lot of really solid tips on how to overcome this addiction and this obsession. So maybe you're not in it now, but you're going to be able to, I encourage you, get a pen and piece of paper out, take notes, because you're going to be able to, then you can store this and have it for when the addiction hits the next time, okay? So basically... What's happened, people, there. now let's face it, there's certain people that obsess much more easily than others, okay? And those are who I'm going to focus on tonight. Other, like I said, we all obsess. Even if you don't obsess over people, you may obsess over your career and you can't stop working. You can't stop working enough to have a relationship. You know, there are people in their 40s and 50s, single, never married, no kids. That's an ad addiction to avoiding relationship okay but i'm not going to focus on them tonight i'm going to focus on the classic example of people that get uh, obsessed you know either in a relationship or when a relationship ends and the re there, there are really five keys to this the first one is they were primarily abandoned as a child okay now, I know there's a segment of the population that's watching and go, no, that's not me. He's wrong already. I wasn't abandoned as a kid. My parents were great. Well, did either of you, did your parents ever get divorced? Over 50% of you have gone through that. That's abandonment. Were you latchkey kids? That's abandonment. Did someone in your house have an addiction issue? Alcohol, drugs, pills, sex, porn, affairs. That's abandonment. They weren't present for you. Were they addicted to their work? Were they constantly working? That's abandonment. 
you know, latchkey kids, all that kind of stuff. That's abandonment. Were you raised in a single parent household? That's abandonment. Um, every single one of us, even with the most kind and loving parents, at times we've been abandoned. Um, it's just, again, because we don't teach how to parent, our parents do it. And even if we taught about parenting, our parents are human. They love us dearly, but at times they're imperfect and we suffer abandonment. Okay. Now, for those of you who are thinking your childhood was perfect, this is going to be a tougher road to recovery because your denial, that's one of the other symptoms or one of the other things that creates the obsession, your denial is so high because of the amount of trauma you went through in childhood. You had to create a reality that um, everything was fine. Because the onslaught of emotion that you would have suffered without the skills to address it as a young child, you couldn't. So your defense mechanism became, no, childhood was great. And this is very common. I, I sit across from people all day long, you know, or give speeches and people like, yeah, this doesn't make sense. My childhood was great. I instantly feel tremendous hurt because if someone's in complete denial, that's a much more difficult situation because they're going to have to face a lot of things they've never wanted to face. And so there's a lot of work in front of them that they think their childhood was fine. And usually it just takes me a question or two even the list I rattled off, but you'll see them. Here's why it's so difficult is I can rattle that stuff off and you can see the wall go up. They're like, well, it's not a big deal. Everybody gets divorced. Well, my, my mom was just working hard. She's, she didn't abandon me. They're, they have to hold on to that false reality. And that's part of what gets us obsessed. We'll learn about that here at the back end. Something called owning your reality that they were, they created such a false reality to survive the abandonment and, or, and it, and it could be many other things that they suffered, not just abandonment that they can't even absorb that. And that's very common. There's nothing wrong with you. It's, it's a wonderful gift. Uh, denial is, is beautiful. It's wonderful as children. It saves our life because your childhood was so traumatic denial saved you. Um, it kept you from absorbing how intense those emotions were. So when you didn't have the skills and tools to deal with it. And so it saved your life. The problem is an adult, it's killing you. And it's the sort the primary source, not the only, but the primary source of what's causing you trouble in your life. You just can't let go of a false reality. You can't own your reality. Again, I'm going to talk about owning your reality more later. Um, so the first one is abandonment. The, really, the fifth one, uh, you know, is or the fourth one I wanted to talk about was denial, but it kind of came up there. Um, also, uh, another what creates obsession is low self-esteem. We all struggle with self-esteem, everybody. It's again, it's a byproduct of the parenting we go through. It's uh, cultural. Um, look at what's happening in politics. If you have money or succeed, everyone's saying there's something wrong with you. Um, you know, that if you achieve something, look at what happens in sports and politics, movies, actresses, anybody who does well, eventually society turns on them and tries to strip them. That's all low self-esteem because I feel so bad about myself. I have to tear you down. I have to bring you down to my level. That's what happens to a lot of people who start achieving things and all their friends and family go, you've changed. Well, sure, they've changed. They probably raised their self-esteem. Now, there are people who've gained fame and fortune who have become complete jerks, but not all of them. Plenty of them have, have just grown and they've grown into themselves. Well, that growth has now created a separation with those who are close to them. So instead of, because of denial, instead of them recognizing, wait a minute, we haven't grown with them, 
what they do is they try and pull the person back. They project and lots of other things. That's a different show. Um, but they try and strip them because they're lacking in their own self-worth. And so the reason, part of why we're obsessing, the, the, what's the sort of low self-esteem is we have given our power to this person that we, they now have more value than us. And there's proof to that. Think about it. I'm going to pause for a second. Think about it. How did we just make them more important than us? Because we obsessed about them. Their life and who they are is more important than ours. Our whole, you know, all of our thoughts are consumed with them. That's a lack of self-esteem. I'm now so interested and focused on who you are and what you're doing or not doing. They have become what's called your higher power. You know, in recovery circles, that's what they would call that. You've made this person your higher power. Well, that's born out of lack of self-esteem. I need this person, this boss, this coworker, this spouse, this partner, this friend to pay attention to me so I have value and worth. Oh, it's not about that. I just want to fix the problem. No, you don't want to fix the problem because to fix the problem, you'd have to stop obsessing about them because the problem is in your own obsession. And so that's part of why we obsess. It keeps us from having to deal with us. It's a wonderful defense mechanism. And we can project our own issues onto somebody else and not have to deal with the massive feelings that come up from the abandonment that we suffered. Okay? That's a great, one of the biggest reasons we obsess is the overwhelming feelings of abandonment. And so if I can focus on you and try and figure you out and try and get you back or get at whatever it is, I, I am keeping myself motivated and focused on something outside of me. Therefore, I don't have to face those inner demons and the pain that comes from finally letting out the pain from the abandonment, sitting in it, feeling it, crying through it, and overcoming it. It's a wonderful defense mechanism. That's another aspect of the denial. It's how we're in denial. We have chosen this obsession. And yes, we chose it. I know people don't like to hear me say that, but it's true. You chose it because of all the men and women and all the different jobs you pick these people, you chose it, and you chose it in part so that you wouldn't have to deal with your denial and also deal with your abandonment. They're perfect for you. That's why you picked them. They are a gift. Literally, you what you've done is you've chosen somebody to try and teach you and help you, but you're focusing on the wrong lesson. You're trying to fix the lesson through them, but the lesson's in you. And so the only way out of this is, you know, I'm going to give you some tools here in a little bit to deal with that. Um, but that's what, that's what has you stuck. Okay. So, so far we have abandonment. Um, you, you've been abandoned in childhood. Even it, here's another thing. So I want to go, well, I didn't go through any of that, but you know, my parents were great. They supported me all the time. Well, if you had suffocating parents, if you had parents that, you know, still are calling you all the time and seeing you every week and all of that, that's abandonment because they're suffocating you so much emotionally. They never allowed you to step into your own life. See, a lot of people don't realize that they think these great loving parents who call them all day, every day and, 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 you know, all these things that that's love. It's not, it's suff It's horrific enmeshment and it's an enmeshment in in it's both suffocating and in that suffocation it's abandonment because they're not there for you they are actually using you to meet their own emotional needs if you're over the age of your early 20s and you're talking to your parents on a daily basis that's a massive red flag um, and I know that if you're pursuing a relationship 
you're not going to be able to get into a healthy, loving relationship until you end the marriage with your parents. Um, because anyone else would be a uh, surrogate spouse. Would be, You'd basically be having an affair because you're still in a primary relationship with your parents. What, you know, whether it's one or both of them, you know, maybe it's only one that you're talking to nonstop and, and all of that. But if that's the case, then that's a big reason you can't get in a relationship because you're basically already married. You're not available. Um, so anyway, that's another topic, but all right. So abandonment, low self-esteem, and all of these lead to codependence. Okay. And so codependence is a very multi-layered topic but again we are dependent upon somebody else to make us feel satisfied and whole that's a basic explanation now i'm not going to go into all of this stuff on codependence i've done shows on it in the past please go to my youtube channel like i said and subscribe you can you know why i know i did a show dedicated to codependence um and the the other thing is the best book out there on codependence you know, if these things, these things I'm mentioning are uh, hitting home for you, get this book by Pia Melody. Her name is P-I-A-M-E-L-L-O-D-Y, Pia Melody. That book should be, I say this all the time, that book should be read by every single adult before they ever get in a relationship. And even if you're married now and your relationship is good, you should be reading it. It should be mandatory. Like, Literally, like before, I mean, we, we make kids get driver's license. Stupid. Make them read this book. You know, that that's much more important as far as their life because they're going to make codependent decisions which will affect their driving and other things. And that's much more important than whether they know how to make a right-hand turn um, as far as the success in their life. And I'm, I'm not saying... We should abolish getting driver's license, but you get the point I'm trying to make. So, all right. So make sure you get that book. I Like I said, it's, the codependence is too big of a topic to get into, but you're codependently involved with somebody. You're not in love with them. Um, you're in the throes of addiction. Um, you're in the throes of codependence, and that's not love. It's a toxic and um, destructive to both you and the other person. And that leads to the last stage, denial. The last, you know, there are five pieces of this. You're in denial about, and, and most likely not because there's any, like, not on purpose. See, most people are in massive denial and they have no clue that they are. <clears throat> it's not like they're choosing it. I talk about it in my cycle. There's a reason we, everyone goes into denial and we all use it. <clears throat> and most people are literally completely unaware of how denial works, what it is, don't even know that they live in it nonstop every day. Um, it's the single greatest disease in society, and nobody other than me really is talking about it. Um, I, I'm a big proponent of denial work because if your life isn't working, bottom line, the most critical piece you're missing is you don't know how much denial you're in you don't know one you're probably not even aware that you're in denial two if you are, can, are willing to admit that you might be a little bit you probably have no idea how it works how it's showing up in your life how you use it and everything denial is one of the least you you google denial and stuff and it's one of the least talked about subjects when it comes to personal growth and to me it's the single most important one and so i hammer on it all the time um, because i want to give you the tools see think of it why would people not want to talk about it look at it, it, it it's a tough sell right because let's face it most of the personal growth stuff out there is to sell you it, I mean, there's some heart to help you, but a lot of it is to get you to buy something. Well, if I'm telling you you're in denial, why would you want to buy from me? Nobody really likes to hear that. And and that's, that's why I decided to do this job is I, I recognize these tougher topics, people don't want to talk about them because they don't think they can sell. And I'm like, I think the, I think the world's ready for it. I think the world's hungry for it. 
uh, and I want to be the person that steps into that and gives people the information that they're hungry for, um, even if it's tough. And I, I try and do it in a loving way. So if you feel like I'm judging you, that's not my intent. My intent is always to be kind and loving when I bring this stuff up. Um, so if you feel attacked, um, that's most likely about you. But I'm human. Sometimes I choose certain words that come across inappropriate or that are that are inappropriate and not the way I intended. So if you feel attacked by me, please point it out. Um, I love I love to see where I'm in denial. I love to see my imperfections. So um, I always encourage people. Yeah, I had someone on YouTube the other day just rip me a new one. It was awesome. So I, I'm a big fan of that. Uh, it doesn't it doesn't affect me. So please, if you're feeling attacked, let me know. Okay, so those are the basic things. Uh, we've suffered abandonment, low self-esteem, codependence, we're in denial, and that leads us to we've given ourselves away. I mentioned this earlier. We've become powerless, and we've made the other person our higher power. Okay, so let's get into solutions, all right? Now, this is the part two. If you have a friend who's struggling with obsession and needs solutions, share the show right now. Like, bomb them on Facebook. Here it is. Here it is. You've been obsessing about Joe or Susie for two months. I'm sick of hearing about it. Here's how to stop doing it. You got to watch this guy. All right. So, all right. The first thing you have to do is stop bombing them, as Pia Melody calls it in her book, Facing Love Addiction. That's another book you need to get. If you're obsessing, if you struggle with this addictive obsessiveness, you have to buy her other book, Facing Love Addiction, because every relationship out there, you know, somebody is primarily love addict and somebody is primarily the love avoidant. If you're the obsessive type, you're a love addict. Um, and that's where the abandonment comes from. So what, do you, what does Kenny mean by bombing? And like I said, this is what Pia Melody talks about. Um, bombing is when we do something to try and get the other person to re-engage with us. All right. Most of like I didn't. This is an area I was massively in denial. I didn't realize um, how much I bombed women and thought I was being nice. You know, I send funny videos or. Um, you know, something to get them to laugh or send a text message that was nice and caring, thinking about you or something like that. Um, that's a bomb. Getting very personal, sharing personal information. That's a bomb. You know, husband and wives will do this. They'll use the kids. You know, they say they're separated and, and they'll, you know, the kid's really sick. I need to talk to you. Things like that. Or Johnny failed the class. We need to talk. They'll use their kids to seductively sucker in the other person. Um, another way we bomb is we get helpless. We somehow can't figure something out and we need their help. And this could be, so, you know, we, we, you know, in an idle conversation, say you're going through a divorce and you're talking about something legitimately about the kids. It's not a bomb. And you let a little word slip out to try and suck them in, you know, something that shows you're a little down or depressed. And they're like, hey, what's up? Oh, well, Susie at work and my boss or my, you know, something where there's a problem and you get weak. And so now they have to help me. This is very, very common um, to be very helpless. Another way of doing this to create straight up, create a fight. Just pick a fight. We sit and obsess about something and then we just go, you know, the other day, blah, blah, blah. It, we, and I'm going to tell you why that happens here in a minute. But so we'll find some way because what we're after is intensity. Because think of abandonment. What did we go through? Quiet, dead, quiet. See, that's why I struggled so much with all of this is 
you know, my dad was always working or didn't spend much time with us. And then my mom, her alcoholism, and she'd be literally in a walking coma for seven to 10 days. Our house would go dead quiet. Or they at seven o'clock in the morning, they'd kick us out of the house and say, don't come back till dinner. And so that boredom, that emptiness, that quiet freaks me out. I still have periods where I struggle with this much better than I used to be. And so that's why we bond because the intensity of that quiet freaks us out. And so we have to get something going. All right. I mean, think about it. That's the essence of addiction is overwhelming feelings. So some people use people to overcome those overwhelming feelings. Others use booze or drugs or sex, you know, any number of techniques, but it's all the same. We are trying to combat overwhelming feelings, okay? Another way we bomb is seduction. Get flirty, send racy pics. Um, there's whole day. I'll never forget an ex-girlfriend showed up at a, well, it was a place I worked and it was kind of public and she went and did her hair and dressed differently and heels. Like I hadn't seen her like that in a long time. And man, was that a seduction bomb. It was, hey, honey, look at me. And it was hysterical. Um, luckily, I had started learning about the process when it happened. Um, but man, it would it, it just hit me. My high school girlfriend. We went in and we dated off and on for, I don't know, a couple years. And we would totally seduction bomb each other to get back together. Always. It was always a seduction bomb. That's how we would always manipulate each other. And uh, um, so that's very common is we get, we, we either hint at sex or get some sort of sexualized something to get the other person's attention. All right. And it can be massively direct or more subtle. Okay. Um, here's a solution for you. I'm going to start getting into that is please don't start dating somebody else until you do the codependence work, until you do the obsession work, until you deal with the love addiction that's going on inside of you. Don't trade the obsession for somebody else. Do the work to deal with the abandonment. And I'm going to give you some tools, uh, you know, of how to overcome that abandonment. Okay. The first tool, this is the single greatest tool to deal with um, obsession. And I stole it from Al-Anon. And Al-Anon is, for those of you who are not familiar, um, Al-Anon is a, basically a 12-step recovery group for uh, friends, family, partners of addicts. Well, it can be any addiction, booze, drugs, you name it. All right. And because if you're married or dating someone who's an addict in any form, you're co-enabling it. You're just as, not just as much, but you are a big, well, sometimes you're just as much of the problem. Depends on the situation, but you are definitely a part of the problem. You are part of the reason they're in their addiction. You are enabling it. And that's part of your recovery. That's part of why you pick them is there's some, so much power in being with somebody who's addicted. And so Al-Anon is a program to help those people work through their codependence and uh, their own obsessive addictions um, because it, it both, both parties are playing a part in the addiction. I did it with my mom. If you don't think you are, then you need to gather a bunch of information so you can get into reality and see how you're enabling the addiction. 
and maybe it's a past relationship and you don't see it you're maybe you're out of it and you're like i didn't do that you have a there's a lot of work there because yes you did um everybody who has ever been with an addict they played into um, the addiction they were part of it so al-anon uh, was developed for those people to help them and there's something called the three gets of al-anon okay the first one is get off their back now what does that mean to get off their back what that means is stop looking so intensely at what this other person is doing or not doing quit paying attention quit analyzing that's the obsession you're paying so much attention to what they're doing or not doing and then you're going what does this mean what does that mean well they did this and they did that that's addiction that's obsession that's codependence that's denial that's lack of self-esteem that's everything i talked about get off their back stop looking so intensely at what they're doing or not they're doing or, or not doing now because you're so hyper focused on them you're probably offering non-stop opinions about what they're doing you share your feelings about what you're noticing you know in their actions or non-actions you're all up in their kitchen telling them what to do telling them how you feel noticing what they're doing or not doing and then you're probably most off uh, also trying to offer solutions that's the 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 co-addict aspect is you know a lot of that are um the the non well the non-using partner the one who's co-addicted they're trying to fix the problem they're offering solutions all the time that's their addiction that's the uh, codependent aspect is they think it's their job to fix the problem and help them it's not help you are actually making the addiction worse and making it last longer because why would the other person want to change? You're doing everything for them. And that's it. See, that's what breaks my heart. Everyone thinks in culture, oh, I'm loving them. I have to help them through it. No. Well, yes, but the way you help them through it is stop helping them through it. Let them suffer the consequences. Quit bailing them out. Quit giving them solutions let their life be miserable that's how you love them so get off their back if you are thinking about them and trying to figure out what their actions mean or don't mean what their thoughts mean or don't mean if they're texting you and you're constantly asking questions you're in addiction you're obsessed you're codependent you're lacking self-esteem all of those things so get off their back i'm going to give you hang on i'm going to go through the three gets and then i'm going to give you some solutions on what you can put in place of those thoughts and you know all that stuff that's going on when you're on their back okay the next piece is get out of their way all right what that means is don't even observe or evaluate what's going on in their life don't even pay attention to it don't offer any helpful advice don't give any negative comments. That would be a form of bombing. You'd create a fight. Don't help them. Avoid any type of catastrophe. If they're a drinker and you want to take the keys, no. Let them get a DUI. Let them suffer the catastrophe. Don't try and help them avoid it. Also, don't try and create one. See, there are other things where we, by bombing, we will instigate their addiction all right that's how we add to the catastrophe okay um literally make their life none of your business none whatsoever get off their back get out of their way their life means nothing to you let them live their life the way they want if they jump off buildings every day and land on the street and break their legs just go wow that's fascinating huh and get back this is number three get on with your own life literally get on with your own life the second you want to think about them stop yourself and get into your own life what that means is 
Start taking care of your own needs and wants. Quit expecting them to do it for you or anyone else because that's what you're doing when you're obsessing. You have this obsessive need to get them back, to get them to understand, to get them to see their how imperfect they were, whatever it is. You want them to change and be different and get this and fill that need you have. It's not their job ever. And yet you're expecting them to do it. That's your own job to meet your needs and wants. Start setting boundaries. Start valuing yourself. Self-esteem work. Start owning your reality. I'm going to get into that in a second. So here's the thing about getting on with your own life. <clears throat> what hobbies have you given up? What friendships have you given up? What interests have you given up? What TV shows? Where in your life have you sacrificed? and stopped pursuing your own interests, your own needs and wants. When you sit there and talk to your girlfriend or the guys on the job site and you go on and on and on about the problem with this person, how are you neglecting yourself in that moment? All right? What else could you be doing that furthers your life instead of taking from it? That's what I mean by get on with your own life. You're laying on the couch texting your, your friend about, you know, just going on about the problem. Well, before you were dating or married to this person or obsessed with this situation, how would you have spent that time? You probably would have been doing something productive for yourself and loving for yourself. Get back into that. Okay. So the three gets of al -Anon, get off their back, get out of their way, and get on with your own life, all right? Um, now, what this means when I talk about reality is when we're obsessing about somebody, we have lost complete reality, all right? We have made them a god of some sort. They are our higher power because we are so hyper-vigilantly hyper focused on them that we have lost touch with reality. We are in denial about how we have given ourselves away and made ourselves powerless. We are responsible for that. And so that's what I mean, you've lost touch with reality. When you obsess about somebody, you're no longer in reality, all right? You are in fantasy, okay? So uh, here are some tips to help you get back into reality and help you stop obsessing. So these are tips I want you to write down. First of all, set a time limit. Put a clock on your phone. I'll give myself 10 minutes to obsess about one aspect of this person or this problem. And as soon as it goes off, then I want you to get into something else. Start taking care of yourself. Do you need to go for a walk? Do you need to hit the gym? Do you need to go to an Al-Anon meeting? Do you need to clean something around the house? Is there some work that needs to be done? Does your car need to be waxed? I don't care what it is. What do you need to do in your life to get you to stop making their life a higher priority than, the, than theirs? Now, these are some... I, I, these, this was kind of neat. I Googled this and came up with these questions. I, I thought, you know, and all I scrolled through and most of the stuff I didn't, I saw, I didn't really like, or it, it, it wasn't a great, it, it really didn't deal with the problem, but this was great. These were some questions that I saw. Um, and this will get you to stop obsessing. So write these down. Instead of thinking about the person, ask yourself something like this. If I had to guess, What's the exact temperature right now? Maybe inside the house or outside, depending on where you are. Like, play a game with yourself. Like, go outside, stand there. What, okay, what do I think it is? Like, even there gives you a break. All right? And then, so, I, it's pretty easy nowadays. It's not like the old days where you had to wait for the 5 o'clock news. You can just pull up your phone and guess it. But that's a great little break to get you out of the obsession. How about your own body temperature? Does it feel a little cold, a little warm, or is it comfortable? What is it? Like, pay attention to your body. Again, you're focusing on you, all right? And it stops. It gets your brain to focus on something else. 
head outside. What's in the sky? What can you see? Are there clouds? Are there birds? Are there planes? Is there dust? How would you describe the sky? What color is the blue? Or is it gray? What could, what, okay, if there are clouds, what do you see in the clouds? Do you see any shapes or anything? Okay, great little tools to get you to stop once that timer goes off to get you thinking about something else. If I could choose on a scale of one to 10 right now, how hungry am I? One, three, five, okay. Well, let's say I'm seven. All right, if I could choose anything to eat right now, what would it be from anywhere in the world? Maybe that gets you hungry. You're out of seven. Okay, so what would I need to get at the store to make this food? How would I find it? Okay, well, maybe I need to go Google how to make that chicken cacciatore. Maybe that's the thing that drives you nuts. Maybe I should go pick up that recipe and go to the store and make that for tonight. All right? Great question to ask yourself to get you out of this, out of the uh, obsession. Go get a book. Go to the store. And don't buy a typical, maybe, you know, your normal is self-help or business, something like that. Get a romance novel. If you don't like romance, get a mystery novel. Get some gripping novel, something that really grabs you and sucks you in. Like I, when I was younger, I used to love Michael Crichton books. I thought he was amazing. Um, he talked about being able to suck you in when you're in your 20s, you know, pretty much, you know, I was pretty immature, and so it was pretty basic writing, but in my 20s, it was just fascinating to read. I, I remember the first time I got his book, I think it was Congo or something. I, I literally stayed up till four in the morning. I almost read the whole thing. I could not put it down. I got obsessed. I got addicted to finding out what was going to happen in the story. So I, I was playing hockey at the time and very lonely, living alone. Uh, had been traded again, didn't know anybody. And so it allowed me to avoid the emptiness from the abandonment I was feeling from being so alone. All right. Here's another thing. Watch a great movie. Get in, get, go to the theater, rent a movie, get encapsulated in something outside of you. How about helping a friend? Is somebody in distress or go to a shelter, get out of you, go help somebody. Now, to stop the powerlessness, to stop yourself from giving yourself away, because in that moment when you're obsessing, you have made them your higher power, you've made, you've made yourself powerless. Ask yourself, what do I need to do right now? What need do I have in this moment? Is it connection? Is it in it? What is it? Go meet it. Is it food? I don't know what it is, but in that moment, determine what your need is and go meet it. All right. Uh, now, as far as the denial aspect, this is a little bit more difficult. Um, one, it's more difficult to, adm to admit, but where are you making a bargain? This is another aspect of giving yourself away because there are aspects about this person you're telling. I, there's someone on Facebook. Um, they had gotten in touch with me. We'd had coffee, I don't know, six months ago. They were dating somebody. And the relationship was a disaster. And their own words, when they described the imperfections in the relationship, I, all I said to them was, did you hear what you just said about this person and how they treat you? Yeah, but they're the yeah, but. Do you hear yourself saying, yeah, but you are bargaining with your denial? Okay. Any of those yeah, but statements or your friends trying to help you and then you switch from beating the other person up and then slightly defending or going, well, I don't know, maybe it means this or, ah, right? That bargaining, you're in denial. You know everything about this person, but you're choosing not to deal with it, all right? Now, it could be a certain area. Like there's a lot of people that, that do this. Um, maybe the sexual chemistry is amazing and they don't want to give that up. So they're putting up with poor behavior in other areas. Um, maybe it's vice versa. Maybe there's no sexual chemistry, but the intellectual um, aspect of the relationship 
is through the roof. Um, but there's such a deficiency in other areas. That's why they're obsessing. They know this person isn't good for them, but they're not ready to drop their denial. Because again, what's behind the denial? Abandonment. Obsession is all, if, if there's one thing obsession is about, it's abandonment. And until you work through those deep-seated abandonment fears and the abandonment feelings, um, you'll just pick another person to obsess over. You'll just keep repeating the cycle. My book, that would be the other suggestion, is after you read Pia's books, read my book. So you can read about the cycle that you're stuck in that has you keep choosing um, these types of dynamics. And you're drawn to them, literally drawn to them. Okay? So I'm going to recap and then uh, end the show tonight. Um, really, some primary things that cause obsession. One, it's an addiction. Um, you're, that's just how it's a chemical addiction in your brain and body. That's the first thing you have to accept. Um, if you obsess over somebody, you are, um, you've are you suffered abandonment. You, you're struggling with low self-esteem. Um, you're stuck in the throes of denial and also codependence, and you've made someone else your higher power. You've given yourself away, okay? So what are the solutions? Stop bombing them. Don't use seduction. Don't use anger. Don't get helpless. Quit finding reasons to reach out to them um, and pay attention to them. The single greatest resource to overcoming obsession, Al-Anon, the three gets of Al-Anon. Get off their back. Quit analyzing them, quit trying to figure them out, quit paying attention to everything they say and do in so much of their life. Number two, get off, it's get off their back, get out of their way. What that means is let them live the life they want. Don't try and fix it. Don't try and rescue them. Don't try and stop them from a catastrophe. Don't create a catastrophe for them. Let them destroy themselves or live their life however they want. It is none of your business. And number three, the most important, get on with your own life. Work on your self-esteem. Make your own needs and wants a priority. Stop expecting other people to meet your needs and wants. It's not their job. Go become an expert in loving yourself. Okay? Then the next piece, those quick tips to stop um, obsessing, is ask yourself questions that have nothing to do, basically to synopsize, ask yourself questions that have nothing to do with the other person. What's the weather like? Am I hungry? What's a great book? Like watch a movie, get yourself completely detached and let yourself feel what's going on, okay? All right, I'm gonna wrap it up there. Thanks everybody again for watching. This show again was another viewer. Uh, sent me a private message saying, hey, I'm struggling with this. Could you talk about it? So please, if there's anything in your life that you're struggling with, by all means, send me your topics. Uh, I'm here to help. That's what I want to, you know, that's why I do the show. So please send those to me through Facebook or an email. Remember the groups. If you'd like to join, send me an email at Kenny at the greatness movement.com. That's Kenny at the greatness movement.com. And we will get you signed up and get you working towards your greatness. All right, like I always say, remember, whenever we're judging, blaming, criticizing somebody, we're always talking about ourselves, an aspect of ourselves we just haven't been willing to accept and move past. And that's what the greatness movement is about, is to give you the tools to do that. Now on the other side is, if you've ever witnessed greatness, some person, who has skills that just blow you away. Well, the only reason you can see those skills is because you have them yourself. Judgment works in the reverse. We can only see in others what we have in ourselves. If you can't feel, if you can't accept that greatness within you, then we need you in the greatness movement. Join us now. Have a great night, everybody. Look forward to seeing you next week. Take care. Anything. I can reach any goal today. I 
can do what I want. I can be what I want to be. Coach on Fire Radio.